G'day guys, Jake here. Today I will be showing you how to install Active Directory, DNS and DHCP on Windows Server 2012. So this is basically the standard sort of configuration for a single server domain controller. It's pretty reasonable to do. It's very common in small business networks. So this is using the same setup that I had before for a router for a test lab which is in another video which is the previous video in this playlist if you look up the learn Windows Server 2012 playlist all right so let's jump into it so this is my fresh install of Windows Server 2012 R2 um, you see I've already set the network adapter to a static IP which you will need to do before you install Active Directory or DNS or any of that stuff. So as you see, I've got this static IP, that's my default gateway, and my DNS server at the moment is my default gateway, but that will change because we're gonna install DNS on this server and we want it to use its own server to do DNS. So to install Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP on this uh, server, we're going to go into the server manager, which is just there. Or if you don't have it there, you can go into the start menu and type in server and it should come up. Server manager, or if you hit this down arrow, you can also search through here for it, which it's there. And you'll see you can click on your local server and see what's going on. If we're going to go add roles and features under that manage tab. And it gives you this thing have a read through it and we're going to want to select role or feature based installation select the server which this one's this we might actually rename this server so it's easier to work with in the future just for future classes that I'm going to do so to do that you go into this PC right click on this PC and under here computer name change the settings Go to here and we're going to call this DC1. And we're going to need to restart the server. So when you restart the server, it opens server manage by, by default. Go manage, add roles and features, role based feature installation, server selection. So as you see, it's DC1 with that IP address, which is our IP address. This is in its own test network as well. I'll just mention this before we go ahead. So this is in its own test network and it's not anywhere near any of my computers, it's routed away from there. It's in its own network. All that's on there is this server. So because we're installing DHCP, if you have that on your normal network, it can start allocating IP addresses out and you'll just get problems on your local network because you'll have two DHCP servers. They might be on different subnets and then you, like your normal computer might not be able to connect to the internet. And you'll just cause yourself a lot of headaches. So I always recommend to put any testing things into their own isolated network, which you can see that on another video that I've done called creating a test network or an isolated nest network for testing in computer labs. So then we select next and under the server roles, there's all these different servers that you can install on Windows Server. So we want to install DHCP server and we also want to install Active Directory Domain Services. Select next. So at this point we're not going to select the DNS server. That's going to come up soon. Select next. It'll have all these different features. If you need extra features you can put them in but we don't. And it gives you this thing. This is what DNS DHCP does. Select next. And then it gives you a thing about Active Directory and explains what that does. So then you 
can go on the confirmation. If you want it to restart automatically, you can tick this. If it's a production server, I never tick that because I want to be in control of when it restarts because you may want to install these features and not actually reboot the server till after everyone's out. So in production, I recommend not ticking that, but I'm going to tick it now. I don't think it needs to restart after this installation anyway. So as you see, it's finished. It didn't need to restart, otherwise the server would have rebooted. But that's all good. Hit close. So now you'll see in this little notifications area, you've got post deployment configuration for both DHCP and Active Directory. We're going to go promote the server to a domain controller. Give it a new domain. So now our domain is test.local. Sorry, test.local. So you can see I've added it to a new forest. That means it's completely new. If you want to add it to an existing domain, you can. If you want to add it to an existing forest, you can. So then the domain forest function level. Now this, if you're going to install older servers, you may want to put it to the older function levels, but we're not. And do you want the server to do DNS? So this is why we didn't tick DNS earlier, because it will do itself here. And then you need to give it a password. So this is in case you ever get locked out of your domain. Oh, hold on. In case you ever get locked out of your domain or something like that and you need to go into the restore mode and restore the domain. So in the NetBIOS name, I'll just leave it the same as the domain name. Then the next thing is the pass for the Active Directory database. I just leave it usually C Windows, but you can store it somewhere else if you have any reason for that. But for this testing stuff, I just leave it as default. Then you can review all the options that you've just set, and you can also view the PowerShell script. So PowerShell, we'll be doing more on PowerShell at a later date, but this is basically what you could type in to PowerShell to do everything that this configurator tool is doing. So if you had server core, you would use a script like that, or server 2012 without the GUI, that would work there too. And then it's going to go through and check the prerequisites. It may give you a warning if there's any errors, it will tell you the errors and you'll need to fix that. Um, if it gives you any warnings, look up the warnings, figure out what they mean. So see, it's given us warnings that prevents Active Directory is going to prevent weaker cryptology and a bunch of that. And you see all prerequisites checks passed successfully. Click install to begin the installation. So that means you passed, you can install. So now Active Directory has been installed and you're about to be signed out because you're going to need to log in as a domain user. So you see it's installed and now the server is going to restart and 
reboot into your new domain. So now if you hit Control Alt Delete, you'll see your username is now test slash administrator. So that is the domain name slash the username. So there's no local user anymore on the domain controller because it's now a domain controller. So all of the users on the domain controller are all now on the domain. And yeah, so that's how you install the domain, how you activate Active Directory. So now you'll notice if you go down here, you'll have new things such as group policy management, all these different Active Directory things, ADSI edit, the DHCP thing. So I'm just going to pin Active Directory users and computers. ADS I edit all these tools to my start menu just to make it easier as I go forward pin to start so you do that just by holding control clicking them and then clicking pin to start so now if we go into DHCP we'll set up our DHCP server so you can see there's actually no scope set in there. So DHCP is running, but it's not got any IP addresses to give out. So if you click there, you'll see before DHCP server can issue IP addresses, you must create a scope and authorize the D DHCP server. So to do that, right click on the IPv4 and select new scope. And now we're gonna give the scope a name and a description select next start IP address so you need to make sure this is on the same subnet and it's got the same subnet mask so then if you want to exclude any IP addresses out of there, you can just by typing start IP address, end IP address and add. Then the lease duration of the IP addresses. So if you have a high volume network with lots of people coming and going and you want to be, you don't want to run out of IP addresses really quickly, like say at a cafe, you can have the actual scope down so say to three hours because people are coming and going all the time their IP addresses will be renewed every three hours but if you have like a small business where you have say 10 computers 10 employees and you have a hundred IP addresses available you can just leave it to default because the amount of devices are not going to outweigh the amount of IP addresses available and people coming and going isn't really going to happen so select next and then there's options for the DHCP server such as routers, DNS servers and stuff. So you want to configure these settings. So to add the IP address of the router, that is the IP address of your default gateway. Add that in and then it's going to say blah blah DNS for your client. What's your domain name? Just leave that as default. And you can add in these other things. If you have other DNS servers, you can add them in, but I don't, so I'm not going to. A win server, if you're using a win server, you can add it in. In this, we're not. And then do you want to activate the scope? So I'm going to say, yes, I want to activate the scope. So now, if you expand out the scope, you can see there's the address pool. So there is addresses from 
in 10.10.0.100 to .150. These are the leases, which there's nothing getting a lease yet. Yet, Reservations, we can add them in later. And these same options as before. So now you have a small Active Directory server. that also has DNS and DHCP running on it. So this server is enough to run a network for your small business. Like say you've got 20 users, this server in this configuration will handle that. You can have Active Directory, DHCP and DNS on different servers, but that's more of an enterprise level thing. So say you have, you know, a big place with 10,000 employees, you might have five DNS servers, seven Active Directory servers, and four DHCP servers. Like, that's perfectly doable. But just for our test lab, we are putting them all on one server and just imagining that they're going to run your little office.